Hello! On Sunday, November 20th, the Melbourne Pen Show finally happened, the first one back since 2019, and thankfully it's indoors because it was absolutely bucketing. So let's go inside and check it out. We were there on opening, of course, so there weren't too many people to begin with, although there was already a crowd building, and the whole floor was set up with all sorts of different displays of pens and inks. We will get to that in more detail soon, I just thought I'd show you a few wide shots of the place first, we were there for maybe a couple of hours and it had gotten pretty busy by then. I'm standing up on the stage. Malvern Town Hall holds a lot of these sorts of events and it's in one of the wealthier suburbs of Melbourne. My brother-in-law and his wife had their wedding reception here. It's got such a pretty ceiling. I got distracted by that, as you can tell. <laughs> But let's take a closer look at the actual pen show. I wasn't sure how much filming would be allowed, but the stall holders didn't seem to mind, so I was able to film a few highlights. These pens are all pretty much vintage, some of them antique, and I just love the display cabinet that they're in. There's something very therapeutic about seeing beautiful pens lined up in nice cases, and this one had quite a lot of pen drawers too. I don't have quite enough pens to warrant a case like that. There were also a lot of vintage items and it was so tempting. But vintage stuff also gets very pricey, so I contented myself with looking at the lovely supplies. I particularly loved the stunning display of antique mechanical pencils and it is exactly 200 years since the first pencil patent in 1822. That's incredible. They're so beautiful as well. I would love to have one of these. But sadly, they were not for sale. I probably couldn't afford one anyway. Next to it was another stall of vintage pens, and I was quite tempted by that giant fountain pen ornament thing. There were plenty of inkwells and other desktop pieces. Those blue and gold ones are so lovely. I saw quite a few people buying stuff as I was standing there. But of course the main reason to go to a pen show is to see the pens, and there were a lot of them. All beautifully displayed, and many that were handmade locally in Australia. Is that a bowl of free ink samples I see there? We might have to revisit that later. But there are fountain pens, rollerballs, ballpoint pens, made with wood, resin, even some metal ones which were really awesome. And there was a mix of brand new pens along with ones which were more of the second hand range. But if you think art supplies are expensive, it has nothing on fountain pens. Many of them were in the hundreds of dollars range, quite a few in the thousands of dollars range. But I do love seeing all of the different designs out there. There was a whole stand for Lamy, which is a well-known German brand, and Mont Blanc, which is a very expensive pen brand. They're beautiful though, I really love them. They also had a display of all the tools that they use to fix and maintain pens. Here's a beautiful display of Van Gogh pens by Viconti. I think that's how you say the name. These ones were probably some of my favourites. There were also some intriguing items on this particular table, which we might see a bit more of later in the video. You can't have pens without ink. Free samples, you say? And of course, there were many full-size bottles of ink too. Australian company Robert Oster, I think, was sponsoring the show, and they had this large display where you could test out all of their inks from their whole range. They provided swatch cards and the little cotton buds to apply the ink. This was a very popular stand, as you can imagine. Basically anything free is popular. <laughs> but it's really fun just to see their whole range, and they have some really gorgeous colours. I have a few bottles in my collection. Today I really just filmed rather than spending too much time swatching the cards myself. There were also a lot of people and I was getting just a bit anxious. I'm not very good in crowds. So to calm myself down, I went across to the paper stand, all of the beautiful Japanese Tomoe River papers. Ah, oh, this was one of my favourite stalls. I had to remind myself that I already have traveller's notebook stuff and I really don't need to buy more. But they just look so aesthetically pleasing laid out on the desk here. Delicious notebooks, look at them all. These are the things I find most difficult to resist. I don't know what it is about paper, but I just love it. Then I got distracted by more shiny pens. These ones in particular were really beautiful. I just love all that gold filigree on them. So I really enjoyed going back to the pen show this year. It's the largest crowd I've been in for a few years, but one has to get back to normality sooner or later. 
And you know I didn't leave the pen show empty handed, there were just too many nice things and of course I had to buy some stuff. I mean it's mandatory right? So let's go back to my studio. So what did I get from the pen show? Oh my lord, let's look at it together. And yes, I did actually set aside some money specifically for the pen show. So I only spent that, I did not spend any more on my credit card. I'm so happy with that. <laughs> First up is something that Nick got for me. It's an old leather case, but it holds fountain pens and it's by Rotring. This wasn't too expensive, but they had a whole bin of these second hand pen holders and this was definitely the nicest one. I think this pen case will go well maybe sitting on top of my pen cabinet. On one of the stalls there was a whole bunch of things that were on sale, so I picked up a few things. This little pen case, which holds a single pen, it's by Waterman. And I had actually got this with the hopes of fitting in a particular brush, but when I bought it home my brush is too long and it sticks out about here, so I guess I'm going to find another use for this. Oops! <laughs> it was a pure gamble, but it was only a few dollars, so I figured it didn't matter too much if it didn't fit. Then I had this nice notepad by Montblanc, and it is actually blank paper, so it will be good for sketching on. It feels really smooth and it would be nice to write on it as well. This was on super sale, so I picked it up. It was the last one. It is a Debden day planner organizer, like the Philofax kind of things. It's quite a nice little case. It's even got a pen in it. But I might keep it for myself or give it away. I just thought it was nice and I do have a few other planners so it can go next to those on my planner shelf for all of the plans that I totally make. <laughs> I got myself a crab pen holder. I've wanted one of these for ages. I keep seeing them online. So there was a little stand that had these and of course I had to pick one up. I really hope my pen will sit on it. Let's see. I've got one here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's so cute. Ah, the simple things amuse me. I also grabbed a few of those Robert Oster swatch cards because I already have some and I figured I might as well just add a few more to my collection. I also grabbed another swatch book, this little one here, which I will pull out of the packaging. And somehow I've got green ink on my hand already. <laughs> I'll show you what that's from soon. So it's just a little bunch of cards for swatching inks onto. I could use these for watercolours as well, but I just thought this would come in really handy because I do have quite a lot of inks that I would like to actually individually swatch out on here. Nick got himself a couple of things. One was in the bargain bin on a particular stall. They had this mechanical pencil and he really likes mechanical pencils. This is actually a really nice one, so I will make sure that I return this to him <laughs> once I have filmed it and I don't end up putting it in my pencil bag. He also picked up this bottle of Mont Blanc Irish Green because he really likes this colour and a few years ago when we were there he picked up a small sample of the Irish Green so they actually had a bottle this year and that's where that has come from. I touched it on the lid and there was a tiny bit on there so it always goes everywhere. They also gave him a little box of Irish Green ink refill things, those disposable ones that can go inside fountain pens. I'm not sure if we have any pens that fit these but hopefully they look relatively standard. And I also picked up a box of these in burgundy red, so that was really nice of them to let us have a set each. I also took a few free samples from that bowl of them that were on that one particular stand. And we've got here Diamine Colt Pens Deep Dark Purple. I think this might be the one that they specifically made for Colt Pens, which is why I picked that up. We also have Diamine Imperial Blue. And then there's Diamine Pink, which looks like it's going to be a really bright colour. And one which really interests me is Robert Oster Shake and Shimmy Envy. And you can see that that is really shiny. You know I can't resist a shiny ink. At the front desk, because we got in there early, they were also giving out free samples to the first 50 or 100 people that entered. This is Robert Oster and this is Melbourne Rose. And Nick was also given this one which is from the 2019 show. I actually already have this because we were there last time. It's like a full size bottle in flaming blue and I seem to remember this is one that's a blue ink that has a red shimmer to it so I might have to swatch that out again. I picked up a couple of other inks that I paid for <laughs> and the first one here is this 
Diatrumentis because I really like this brand and this is petrol ink so I think this is kind of a bluey green color I'm really curious to try this one out but it looks really pretty just on the bottle and the other one that I got which did not come with a box normally they do but it did have the bag for it is ferris wheel press and I've seen these online I just think the bottles are really gorgeous it's like this round bottle and I've got a blue one so really those two were my main ink purchases and then Nick bought the Mont Blanc green one. So along with this Mont Blanc pad of paper that I showed just before, I also bought some other paper too because I cannot resist it even though I totally don't need it. I got a tiny couple of notebooks which is Tomoe River paper and that's like that really thin Bible paper. I have a large book of it which is this one here and if I flip to it you can just see how thin those papers are it's like rice thin but it's really nice to put inks on and I've used it before you could just see how nicely the inks sit on there oh look and that flaming blue is the 2019 ink which we picked up that one <laughs> so I do have it swatched in here and you can see that it does have a red shimmer around the edges of it but I really like this paper to use with fountain pens and inks so I just grabbed a couple of tiny notebooks which will go into my fountain pen cabinet with all the other notebooks <laughs> and there's two here glacier edition and it's a dot grid set of two with 80 pages so I'm quite pleased about those it's the same sort of paper there some loose sheets of Tomori River paper I think this may be blank which will be useful for something I don't know what but <laughs> I just had to have it and the last thing I got which is the same company as this Ferris wheel press ink I also found this enormous Ferris wheel press sketchbook it was the only one there so it's hardback and it was a really pretty pattern so I just had to bring that home but it is 160 GSM paper and there are 240 pages so it's pretty big apparently it lays flat too I think it will with a bit of persuasion so it's just a very plain white paper but it's quite thick and I think pencils might be quite nice on this I'm not too sure about anything with water although I reckon ink would be okay too but maybe not so much watercolors I might have to do some experimentation I just love beautifully bound books it's such a pretty design I really like it I'm keeping the paper cover on it for the moment and I got one final thing I couldn't go to the pen show without buying a pen <laughs> and as you can imagine fountain pens are not cheap so I decided I was only going to get one unless of course there were some cheap ones but everything was pretty pricey so I saw this one as soon as I saw the color I knew that I had to have it it was just so pretty and once again by Ferris wheel press it's an absolutely beautiful little fountain pen in Piccadilly pink and I like the box too it's a very bright one but it has a little pen case although I can put it in that other pen case that I got as well which will be a bit stronger than this one but the fountain pen itself it's got this really nice brass bolt on it which took my fancy and I like brass things very much I haven't actually looked to see on the nib what size it is I found it <laughs> it is a size M so it's a medium nib which I actually really like for writing it's a bit easier than a fine nib sometimes and that's all brass but I love the end of that I think that is really gorgeous and I like all of the engraving on there and the other great thing about this pen is it has a converter as well so I can use my bottled inks with it I'm really happy about that just a fairly basic one if I can figure out how to work it there we go so you twist it like that to draw the ink up into the pen but this one just caught my eye immediately and I just think sometimes you just know which pen is the one to take at that particular time and it was on sale too which is even better yay because around the same sort of time I actually ordered a few things from Colt Pens in the UK and those have arrived I might as well show you what I got and just do it all in the one haul I got myself another Diatrumentis archive ink this is the black one it's excellent in fountain pens and I am getting through my other bottle they had an ink sale during October and it was buy four and get a fifth one for free so because I had this and I wanted to make up enough so that I got free shipping I ended up with a few more bottles of ink which I totally need <laughs> but I got these ones which are Faber-Castell inks I've got black royal blue 
pink, of course, and red. There was also turquoise, but they sold out, and so I ended up getting this one instead. <laughs> this isn't from Colt Pens, this next thing. I just happened to see it in TK Maxx and had to have it because it is a shiny pencil case. This is a Christmassy one, I just really like that. And the main reason that I made an order from Colt Pens, going back to this, is of course this one thing. I've already done two videos over Christmases looking at one box which was red and the other which is blue. This year they put out a green version and I did it over it for ages because it's not cheap but I decided in the end I may as well get it and film another video for Christmas so guess what we're doing? The Ink Vent Calendar by Diamine. It's so beautiful. I really love these. Of all of the arty calendars that are out there, the Ink Vent is my absolute favourite. I just thought I'd give you a sneak preview because I'm so excited that it arrived. <laughs> and if you're wanting one, maybe they haven't sold out yet, so do check out Colt Pens. I will link it down in the description below. They also have some other Colt Pens advent calendars. I couldn't afford to get them all. I decided to go for the Ink Vent one again. They do international shipping, although you do have to spend a fair amount in order to get free shipping, so be aware of that. Do I have time to swatch my inks? Oh, go on. I've written them all down, so I'm just going to swatch out all of the different inks we got, including these little guys too, because I'm really curious to see the colours. Here's a giant pile of stuff. I still love this little crabby. He's so cute. So yes, we had a fantastic time at the pen show. I always do. It's a really fun half a day out and it's always nice to see all of the beautiful fountain pens laid out in their gorgeous displays. But between this and my recent visit to Senior Art, I think I am all shopped out for quite a while now. But I have no regrets adding to my ink collection, and I am definitely going to be putting all of these into my ink cabinet. I hope you enjoyed taking a look through the Melbourne Pen Show with me. It's nice to get back to normal activities and not have everything cancelled by the pandemic. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up let me know if you've ever been to a pen show in your local area and don't forget to click the subscribe button for plenty more videos to come i will see you all again really soon in my next video have a wonderful day out there and i'll swatch you later bye